ever, ever, I don't know, too afraid to say it out loud, just to name what the pain is. Just name it. It was like all out there for you, Valdi, right? We had a school shooting, right? They couldn't help but name it. But they had other things before that they weren't naming, right? Yes, ma'am. There's a brand new a book out from Nami. It's got a brand new book. Yeah. Out. Uh, but somebody had said, you, you can't tame it until you name it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you can't, you can't deal with it until you say, okay, this is anxiety or depression or whatever. So mm -hmm. I, I like that too. So you, you know, name it to tame it. That's right. The naming process, and we could do a whole lot of theology around that, too. But um, any last one? I don't want to, because it, it was such a good presentation. I thought it was important, the story of the children, how they went into, before camp, they went in very quietly. Silent. And then the at the end of camp, they were laughing and loud, just like children. Mm -hmm. We can see the impact of compassion. We call it transformation, but you can see it. So it's very real, right? And there is another hand over here. Yes. So I remember you mentioning that being together, we spoke individual and community. And while that is true, it's also true that it's important to have community and have that community. So it's both this compassion work as well. It's individual, personal, but it's also as a community. And in terminology with the mental health, that's like collective trauma and collective healing. And I think there is one more. Did you have something? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think of it as finding God in every mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. Quaker concept. And go Quaker, yeah. But thank you that, that, that we are experiencing that wholeness when that compassion and transformation happen. Um, this might be important to furthering our conversation this morning. We're gonna have conversations, um, but there's always a question, it's like the first question, if you were with a group and you go through any kind of compassion education, people will say, well, what do you mean by compassion? Right, there's that, that's like the first question, you know, what do you mean, you know? And, you know, there's probably as many definitions of compassion as there are people. You know, our perceptions are in that, our life experiences are in that. But I'm just going to share with you um, one of my learnings about empathy and compassion that has been really informative to me and the work that I do. And um, so, and we're going to use these definitions we're going to be talking in this way this morning. So empathy is that human thing that happens when somebody is suffering. And not only do you recognize it, right? You resonate with it. And there's this extension kind of that happens. There's this human movement. So when you hear compassion fatigue, that's a misnomer. The fatigue comes from empathy. Now you might also have overworked fatigue. So if you're about, you can get tired doing compassion work. But I'll go into the compassion definition. So neuroscience has watched this human dynamic of empathy and empathy takes our energy. We need it, it's an important thing, that doesn't make it, it, but that's, it's this flow that happens between us, right? Compa compassion, and they need each other, um, compassion has a sense of agency, a sense of action. So I'm feeling Mig's pain, I mean I resonate, you know, like, oh my gosh, you know, I get it, right? But then something happens maybe even between us where we might have a, an idea together or, or I feel a sense of something and I say, well, you know, like, what if we... And then suddenly the energy goes up in an idea. Yeah, we, we could do that, you know? I mean, when we listened to Mike's story this morning, 
I, I wish I had had the smarts to bring Marion Sokol here, who is the executive director for the Children's Bereavement Center in San Antonio. She's the woman that went to Uvalde and practically has not left there since and helped set that up, right? You will, her energy and her life force that comes from talking even about that is like endless because she's like a living sense of agency. That's compassion. So empathy pulls energy out of humans. Compassion puts energy in. So you can tell the difference when you're doing the work. You can tell, it's subtle, but if you're aware of it, you'll start to note, oh, you know, and you know, your eyes might even be glazing over. Or, you know, things happen here. And neuroscience, there's tons of research now on it. So I think those, those subtleties are really important to the work. Um, and I hadn't planned to go into any of that, but um, just because of Mike's presentation, I've, it's just a, a perfect opportunity. So um, it's also a good transition in that in terms of compassion in the last, I would say, easily a decade or more, there has been, and you can just go online, tons of research done in terms of compassion, neuroscience, social science, that I look at it and I think, yes, finally the science has caught up to the ancient wisdom that all of our religions know. To treat others the way we wish to be treated and not to treat others as we wish not to be treated. It's not rocket science, it's human science. This is how healing works. That giving and receiving that Mike talked about. Right? The other science that's a little bit more recent, uh, and you can look it up Google, but just Google pro-social, pro-social, um, specifically pro-social world, but you can just Google pro-social. So there is a Nobel laureate by the name of Lynn Ostrom, uh, who wasn't a social science scientist, but she was just curious about how humans work. And she literally observed thousands of communities, people, how they work together, how they live together, how they heal together, how they grow together, da, 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 back to that better together. The key is together. So everything that they've, she observed and got her Nobel laureate for has gone into this very large body of social science research that has debunked survival of the fittest which I'm sure all of you got that in school. So this recent research tells us the reason our species is still alive on this planet is because of collaboration and working together. It just doesn't make the headlines, but here we are. I mean, you come to a stoplight and that's collaboration. Predetermined collaboration, but you're in for it, right? Right. So again, it, it, you start to look at all the different little acts that are happening. Everything that we're doing at this, this conference, by the way, is, is compassion and connections. Absolutely everything. So we are living in a compassion bubble that's absolutely beautiful, by the way. But um, so I'm going to go back. So those like are basics around compassion. And I had mentioned before about there are about 100 cities. I'm going to do just a little bit of history here for San Antonio's sake. Um, there are about 100 compassionate cities around the globe in 2017. That's not lot, that long ago. If you th yeah, right? And um, that comes out of, um, did we put, we put the charter on the chairs, right? They, they, they're kind of pink and white cards. So there's a, and, and I could go into a lot of this, but I'm, 
you know, I want to get into more of the work, but this is part of it. Um, uh, tra this Charter for Compassion, which Meg is p uh, passing out, was um, written like 2009. And I know most of you are probably familiar with TED and TEDx. Um, well, a winner of TED, which is like the, the big one, the original one, in the late how do you how do we talk about the 2000s in the late early 2000s you know be odds yeah before 10 somewhere there right but was um um i'm lost i know her name karen armstrong but she's not exactly a theologian she's a julie help me she's a comparative religion scholar there we go comparative religion and um and if you met her she's from england <laughs> she's English, but she's not like one of the English comedians, right? Anyway, so she presented at a TED. And TED, uh, the original ones, are like, you know, the audience votes on the idea that's presented that can most change the world. And this, you know, British, not a comedian, said that we needed compassion. And she won. And I encourage you, you can Google that too. Karen Armstrong, it's spelled K-A-R-E-N, Karen. But it's pronounced Karen, like the car in the garage, Karen. And um, she won. So you can Google it. Hers is one of the, she's got lots of viewers on that. And so you can hear that and it's pretty powerful. And so the audience agreed what the world needs more than anything else was compassion. And with her 100,000 uh, winning dollars, she uh, connected with people all around the planet, spiritual leaders, religious leaders, and they formed this Charter for Compassion, which I think is probably one of the most important documents of our day. And it's beautifully written. Yeah, it's almost like poetry. It's so beautiful. Um, so that's kind of how it started. She also wrote a book, 12 Steps to a Compassionate Life, an easy read. Um, and we're going to be giving you the cliff notes to it as a gift when you leave. But I uh, highly recommend that. And that's how the movement began that led to 100 cities and now 600. Was not part of her plan. People started people started reading the books. That's how it happened here in San Antonio. There were about six of us who started reading the book. And that was around, I don't know, 2009, 2010. And that community group said, we're going to be a compassionate city. We're just doing it. And so we researched other compassionate cities and how they had done it, what worked well, what didn't work well. The ones that didn't work well were mostly ones that went straight to like their mayor and city council and had them do a proclamation and they signed it and nothing happened because nobody in the community knew what was happening and it just that was that so here in san antonio we decided to do something different and we and we learned this from other places as well but we went into community and did that intentionally for seven years you know we have short term limits in uh, San Antonio. And so you, you really don't know from one two years to the next two years who's going to be in office. And so those of us in the community said we don't want to risk compassion on some elected official. And I work for the city. So that's, that's a, just a statement of that's how San Antonio works. So we worked hard. In fact, we worked on the resolution for over two years writing it. It's ridiculous. It, that's a side story, but it's pretty funny. Anyway, so um, it came to city council then in 2017 by a group of young men that were seniors in high schools, and they were in a group, they were Muslims and Christian young men, and they had been for a year meeting to learn about each other, and um, they were doing a final project, they had to do a final project, they were asked, and th they found out about Compassion, Sa Compassion San Antonio Online, and they wanted to be a part of it. And those young men, San Antonians, 17 years old, took it to city council, and the first resolution 
of the new mayor, which would be Ron Nuremberg at the time in 2017, this was the first resolution he signed on the first morning in office on June 22nd, 2017. So from then, it's just been growing and moving and flowing and creating. Um, at the very beginning of the pandemic, like right at the beginning, a compassionate institute was being formed here in San Antonio. Um, the resolve number three, I think, in the resolution is education, compassion education, offered in every educational institution in our city. This is a big idea, right? But we did it. Anyway, um, and how to do that, how to get that kind of skill set training going. And we were about to have this fabulous in-person institute and COVID hit. Even when I went to that meeting that week, right after it hit, I'm like, they're all, and we didn't know better. Nobody was wearing masks. We didn't know any of that yet in the first week, right? And I'm like, we're, they're all gonna decide we're not doing this thing. We're just gonna stop? And I'm like, this is probably when we need it more than ever. And we did it. We just plowed through and did it virtual. And 85% of our educational institutions in San Antonio participated in that training and year-long institute. 100%, I'm really proud about this, 100% of our colleges and universities participated in that institute. And the largest cohort in that institute was from UT Health, teaching doctors. And now, all their residents have to go through compassion training at UT Health. Do you see the same ripple effect? It's pretty amazing, right? Pretty amazing. Two days after Uvalde happened, um, some people here in town said exactly what Mike was saying towards the end. You know, like, what are we doing before? And so people are going, you know, what are we doing in San Antonio? One, how can we help Uvalde? And so we are gifting, San Antonio's gifting Uvalde 22 compassion trees. They're the tree city or something is their slogan. So um, we have a whole compassion tree project here. And so we're gifting them with 22 compassion trees to plant wherever they want to plant in Uvalde. Um, we're also offering them um, 20 plus no cost training hours on uh, mental health to anybody in Uvalde. And we do that here with Bridges to Care. We about have 800 people now, I think, in Bridges to Care who had received that 20 plus hours of free training. Um, but that came together. I mean, like not even a week later after Uvalde, um, I happened to be at this meeting with mayors from all over the United States. It's called the U.S. Conference of Mayors. What I found surprising was that they were all talking about Uvalde. <coughs> and after some deeper listening, I, I, I think why, yes, it had just happened. But I, I think why it had a larger impact was because it was so rural and small, right? Like, you know, New York City, San Antonio, violence. But you know, small town, rural Texas, what? We have got to stop, right? There are like 30,000 people in the United States have died due to mass shootings. We've had more shoot mass shootings in the United States than we've had days in this year. This year. That's crazy. At a conference, I probably shouldn't use that word at. I'm sorry. And I didn't mean that as a joke. I should probably should, didn't do that. But, um, but out of that, now I'm going to hand it over to my friend Meg. Because out of that grew this idea among compassionate San Antonio that now lives in the community the compassionate cities, these 600 around the world, they are partnerships between their collaborations between the community of that city and the government in that city. So compassionate San Antonio doesn't just belong to the city. 
and it doesn't just belong to regular old people, right? It belongs to all of us. And so the community partnership now of Compassionate San Antonio lives with the Peace Center at Northwest Vista College in the Alamo College District. And that's where Meg is, and she is the executive director for that Peace Center. But out of that grew the idea of Compassionate USA. I think it's kind of cool that it has SA at the end, right? Because we're gifting it, have gifted it to the entire country. And because it's free and online, that means we gifted it to the entire world. And think of that ripple effect. Meg, it's all yours. Thanks, Anne. Yeah. I could listen to the wisdom of Anne Homke all day. Um, like Anne said, my name is Migdalia Garcia, and I'm at Northwest Vista College, a community college. Right? And that makes me very proud because our mission at a community college and much of what I'd love our mission for Compassion to be, it is, is how do we democratize education? How do we democratize compassion? Not only for those who can pay for it, but for those who need it the most, communities who need it the most. Right, and so um, when, when Ann was talking about Compassionate USA, and she said, I think it's cool that it has SA in it, right? That is very cool. That's a nod to San Antonio where it started. I wanna tell you a little bit about the origin story, but I also wanna point out that Compassion U has a U in it. So it needs you. It also has an us in it, right? It has an SA in it, all of us, and then it has everybody, right? So. It was symbolic, I don't think, we thought of a lot of that. We were intentional about a lot of that. Where you start an origin story and just told you because of Uvalde, these conversations started. And then it was, well, we are a community college. We do have people that teach. What if we did curriculum around compassion? What if we did an hour and a half feature length film about compassion? And then we talked to our PR people, they're like, oh God, no. Who is gonna watch you for an hour and a half? And I thought, wow, <laughs> right? They said, to put it in perspective, Avenger movies are an hour and a half. <laughs> and I thought, okay, thank you. So then it morphed into, what about a campaign that invites people to work together collectively on having a shared vocabulary, a shared skill set, to help work on collective trauma. How can we heal together? So what transpired y'all was that a group of us in community with the city, in community with uh, you know a district department at, at the access office at the Alamo Colleges, we got together and that's what we did. So now if you look at what is this Compassionate USA campaign, we'll go into it a little bit uh, a, a little bit later about what it looks like, what you can utilize. But really what came out of this was, let's have some fundamental skills that we can all agree are useful, that are helpful, and let's democratize it. Let's make it for everybody. Now are we there? 100% we're not. Currently it's only in English. Um, we had an African delegation, this is really exciting. <laughs> and they said, oh my God, your campus is beautiful. So where do you, you know, the diplomats, the students that work for the UN, you know, do you have a list of those? And I said, diplomats, you do what? He said, yeah, this program that you're talking about, do people, what, what career path is it? And we had never, and thankfully, never thought about our students on a career path they can be, they have the potential, but to go to the UN or become ambassadors, we are talking about daily living. How do we imbue in our students, how do we teach the daily living of compassion and empathy? Right, so they know it as a skill and they know it as a gift and they know it as something that they can share with their families and with their communities. So that's a little bit about the origin story. Um, I'm gonna turn it back over to Anne because we wanna invite you into community and into conversation. And then we'll walk you through um, a little bit about our gift to the world. We wanna show it to you. We wanna gift it to you today. 
So Anne. So we want to invite folks into pairs. And you know, again, I'm just going to say, compassion is not easy. It's not soft. It's simple, but it can take a lot of work, right? So I want, we're going to invite you, I'm going to invite you into pairs. And if you're really bold, I invite you to find somebody you've never met before, right? And then to discuss, just for about 10 minutes between you, so um, we'll discuss. I could do that active listening thing, but we'll just discuss maybe stories, and not hopefully as big as Mike's, right? But stories of compassion that you've seen. Um, maybe share how you're already connected with Compassion at San Antonio or something. Just some connection with your partner about connection, compassion, okay? So you kind of put that together. I'm going to, I'm going to share a little bitty story. I was in the Seattle airport waiting for my flight and a grown man went running through like the, the walkway you know, between the gates. You know, there are gates over there, and there's gates on my gate. But he goes running through, and he yells out. Everybody turns, and he look, look at him, because everybody heard. He yells out and says, I can't find my parents. And another woman was like this far from him. It was like, straight out of love actually or a movie i mean i felt like we were all in slow motion every everybody's face was there she walks over to him takes his hand starts talking to him and they walk over to the monitor and they're looking at the monitor you know and now he's crying mm. and then she walks him over to whatever gate it is that Talk about a moment. That's a gold one, right? Okay, about 10 minutes. Find a, a partner. I encourage you, somebody you don't know, move around, do whatever you need to do with chairs. 10 minutes. What wonderful conversations. It would be great if we could come back together. We need like a little. <laughs> oh, do 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 do. That's a good strategy. <clears throat> so, y'all, we want to take a moment just to hear some of the compassionate stories, the stories of compassion. They came out through your conversation these connections, what connections were made? Would someone, a couple people like to share what was talked about or a story that you shared in your pairing? Yes, please. I won't share the story, but something that was recently said um, was when we were sharing our stories, they were all similar and we all had these like warm feelings. And then one person said, I wish social media would focus more on compassion stories versus what we're seeing. Because if you think about like the algorithms in social media, you see all of these negative things, a lot of negative things at least. Sure. So imagine if the algorithms were showing more compassion, how different we would be as a whole, like just community based, but also worldwide if you're seeing compassion stories and people being able to share those things. That was said and I just want to share with everybody here. Yeah, that's beautiful. And for many, many years, one of our Peace Center members, Susan Ives, many of you may know her, was collecting stories on compassion, compassionate acts, what, what people were doing, everyday, ordinary people engaging in compassion. So thank you so much for that. And you know, it starts with us. Let's start doing it. You know, we think about, it was an idea there. It's here, it's this connection, right? That's why we came together. So what would it look like if we connected in that way? If we spread compassion through what we had influence on. So that's a great idea. Yeah, please. My name is Did you want to go first? Because I, I'm a little long with you. <laughs> we'll help you. We'll help you. Go ahead. So I, I really need to know. 
Well, um, when I retired, I in big San Antonio, I decided to adopt a simpler lifestyle. Sure. I don't drive. I take the bus every place. And soon, soon, I, I developed what's called, I call it bus ministry, where I just go out and be present with people on the bus. Bus ministry, how beautiful. And um, basically, lots of homeless people guarantee every day I'm going to see somebody with serious mental illness and to see somebody who's homeless and things like that. And basically, what it is, it's what I call it finding God in, in, in every person. It's like seeing, seeing the Seeing God in, in them, um, connecting to them. Um, don't you, I mean, and I mean, there's something I can do to help with them. Um, if they want to talk, but it's mainly, it's really connecting and finding out the real person. Beautiful. Seeing the, real person, seeing the good in, in some inside of them. I love and it. And I kind of like, so I kind of like, like my mission is to kind of like expand it, like I call it micro ministry. It's something which everybody can do. I love it. And I was like thinking about the presentation this, this morning. It's like, what would have happened if some kid or Salvador was uh, invited to lunch? Sure. He was isolated. Sure. I could have had humongous type things. Sure. So, um, so that's. Uh, yeah, thank you for sharing about your ministry. Yes. Thank you so much. I, when I'm on the bus, I pray for everybody in my side. I pray for that man, Lord, that's walking on the sidewalk as I'm going along. Everybody on the bus, may that bus lady who didn't give compassion to the lady who is getting on the bus right now as I was getting on and off. Uh, that didn't want to, or maybe it wasn't functioning, the wheelchair ramp. And, you know, I assisted her, another man assisted her before, and, you know, that she needed to have a passion. But what I wanted to say was, God bless you, in Jesus' name. What I wanted to say was, I've been so moved all my life uh, for people who are disabled and people who are mentally disabled, physically disabled, and that they're not just going to, it's not just going to stop here at a little, signature and your little uh, email, it's going to, I'm going to allow God's will to be done in me and I'm going to move with this. I, will, I would really like for everybody in here to be compassionate and, and try to help me by just giving me your name and your email address. I'm not going to reach out to you. I'm only going to present this to the right parties and through the help and the, the guidance of these people here at this wonderful mental health awareness place. I'm going to send my letter and I'm going to speak to my attorney who am I work for because he's a very kind gentleman and compassionate and I know that he'll help me. But I'm going to, to I've already begun the letter, I've already begun my thoughts, I've already, I've spent hours and hours on this just last night just writing and writing and I got up again at 2 to 4 in the morning just writing and writing because God's going to move things and if it just takes one person, just like in that 100 cities, one person to do is make a difference, a change, then be that one person on my petition, please, and help me find, to find the right paths and help me reach out to the right people that will help Bandera County and Kendall County and Frio County, where I personally have a friend who has zero help. And it, I had to bring him to San Antonio and allow him into my own home with my two young children, my minor children. I'm a single mom, I don't get child support. And I allowed him to come into my home because I, I was, I felt empathy towards him. I met him and my cousins, and I, I, I was moved. We were moved towards each other. And I, he is now a changed person. He's got medication. He's on medication. He's, he's all alone. His mother has now passed away. All of the people that were blocking him have been removed from his life. But he's living in a house that's broken down and torn down. And I keep telling him to go, take your little check and pay your bills every month. Look, take your little check and get your cousin who's a plumber to come and put plumbing in your bathroom. You have no bathroom, no toilet, no shower. He has to reach out to people who are 
slammed the doors in his face. Why? Because he used to be an alcoholic. Why? Because he used to do drugs. And now he's got that chemical imbalance that so-called, do you know what it is? A chemical imbalance. It, it, all of those things that he did all his entire life, God, forgive him, but bless him now in his place where he's kind of like him. Because they do need that help. I need that help. I was used all of my life. I'm, I, I, God, I didn't do every moment of my life, and I thank the Lord for being there, for being for people like you and people who need the mental assistance that you guys are teaching us about and I hope that doors are open wide for my education so that I too can be one of those counselors that goes to those little towns that don't make a lot, that don't have a lot, but that in a few years that I too will be able to make a difference because people like you will sign my petition and that you will make your small difference in where you stand, where you sit, where you live, your friends, your family, your neighbors. People you meet at the stores, people on the bus that just need your prayer, even if they don't know it. Just whisper your prayers and pray in Jesus' name. So I ask if it's okay with you ladies, if I can start this around. And if you don't want to sign it and put your email, that's fine. God bless you anyways. Please, I ask for all of your help. So that so yeah, so the energy of compassion, right? So we talked about empathy. We talked about Energy, compassion is that action. Compassion is a verb. So um, what I'd like to do is invite Anne back up. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about compassion at USA. Yeah, we're going to find out about something that can, we hope, will help all of us, right? But I have a comment to that social media thing. We are society. So if you want something on social media, go home and make it happen. Yeah. So uh, that's how it works. So um, Sonia and I passed out cards. So we're putting compassion straight in your hands, okay? So I invite you to pick up that card and turn to the back side. Well, I don't know how you decide, but it looks like this. We have two different sets of cards out here. So that's can be a little confusing, but there's a bigger QR code, looks like this. So go there, pick up your cell phone. How many workshops do you go into where they say, pick up your cell phone and we're gonna use it? Put this Compassionate USA puts compassion into the hands of parents, of counselors, of mayors, of brothers and sisters. I mean, just make your list because this is available to everyone. If you don't know how to use a QR code, maybe the person next to you will show you how. So that's called collaboration. And that's how we grow as a species and say resilient and self-sustaining. So go there. Find it on your phone. Yes, ma'am? You're working, are you talking about this or this card? It's, it's not there yet, but it will be one day, okay? Um, this was just launched, Compassionate USA was officially launched at that same, a year later, same conference of mirrors where the idea came out of a year ago in June. It was launched the beginning of June this year, and then we launched it locally at the end of June this year. And so it's, it's out there, right? So this is how you find it. I, you know, I just search when I can't remember or whatever, I just search Compassionate USA. Make sure it's an A-T-E at the end, Compassionate USA. There's also another Compassion USA. Great thing, not the same thing. Right? So you could get confused, right? So um, anyway, I hope you found it on your phone. I hope you keep it there on your phone. We do have it on screen, but I'm encouraging you to use your phone because this will help you wherever you go, right? So Sonia, can you scroll, not this, scroll to the top of the page? So I'm just giving you the basics <clears throat> on the website at CompassionateUSA.org. And hopefully this is what you're seeing, right? If you want to get like information on a regular basis, you can put your name in there and just keep scrolling. You'll notice, stop, the dedication is dedicated to the families, children, and communities who are healing from school shootings 
and all forms of injustice across the United States. San Antonio is gifting this to the entire world at no cost. Gifts are acts of compassion, right? So we are trying to model the change we wish to see, but on a very large community scale. So it, it talks about it here and um, how it starts with us. Just scroll a little past the video. We're gonna come back to the video. Gives an overview, start your journey. And Meg's gonna go deeper into all of that with us. So now scroll back to the trailer. So when you get ready to tell somebody else about it, this Compassionate USA, you can pick up your phone and you can go to the trailer, which is one minute and I'm looking. It's, it's just a minute, a little over a minute, right? So we got a trailer for it. So we're gonna hear it now. We reflect on the well-being of our cities. A little louder. Our nation. We must acknowledge the impact of all we have endured in recent years. The people we have lost. The injustices we encounter. The search for peace, unity, and solidarity. While it seems impossible to overcome today's challenges, there is power in our collective ability to transform our communities. Let us not rest until we know we have done everything we can to work toward compassion, to bring our neighbors together, to learn how to heal. Compassionate USA is a six-part learning journey designed to teach self-compassion and community well-being that honors our common humanity and affirms the beauty of our differences. Join a people-centered campaign committed to creating compassionate cities. The journey starts with you. The journey continues with us. Compassionate USA. So as Meg mentioned earlier, this, this that we have here is Compassion USA is it came out of a collaboration between the city, community, Alamo Colleges, Compassionate San Antonio, and in fact, it's directly out of Compassionate San Antonio. So we're, you know, spreading, you know, the golden goodness. So I'm gonna hand it over to Meg, and she's gonna talk a little bit more and bring us into at least one of the videos, and also the micro course. Okay, so on your phones, we don't have it up on the screen, but on your phones, <clears throat> if you look at, um, if, you, if you look at what is available, we, I, I told you about the hour and a half, you know, video we were gonna do. <clears throat> we decided the best way we know people to learn is about six or seven minutes of lecture right six or seven minutes of concentrated energy so each of these videos so be self-aware be good to yourself you know gratitude and interdependence they're between six and eight minutes each and each of them touches on the topics that they're labeled and so it's a great entry point it's a great invitation to start learning this shared vocabulary these skills or for those of you that already know it, already practice it, it's a good refresher. Or it makes it, again, democratizing compassion in ways that people understand it, right? And so each of these videos is done by, <clears throat> excuse me, what we would consider a content expert. I don't wanna say expert, that's not a great word. Someone who has worked considerable in that field and they are the ones that are guiding us through these concepts. So I, I love it. Um, you may recognize some of the people on there. Some of them are San Antonio. Some of them are national people, <clears throat> but all here in San Antonio to help um, guide us. After each video, there is a mindful practice. Some people call it contemplative practice, just inviting you to apply some of those skills that you just heard about. <clears throat> the last thing I'm gonna say well, two things. One, there's also a course connected to this. The course is a little bit longer. It's a little bit more involved. It's a mixture of videos and readings and practices. And the, the entirety of the course takes about 20 hours, 15 to 20 hours. What, <clears throat> talk about collaboration, talk about connection. It's done through Coursera. 
And Coursera is the largest learning platform in the United States, and it's powered through Google. And when we started this, they said, well, it's gonna be a course and we charge for courses. So we are going to charge you per person that takes the course. And I said, well, do you know what our budget is? <laughs> we can't afford, if, if this is San Antonio's gift to the world, we can't afford it. So Google came back and said, what? This is a collaborative? Between whom, where, how? And they gifted it to us, y'all. They gifted it to us. Then, this is exciting, they said, oh, you know what's really great? You're a community college, you're saying to people, well, credential, credential up. And we said, well, we do say that. So why don't we offer a badge with this course? They said, well, uh, okay. They said, well, it, it, it'll run about $50 for every person that takes it, but then you can put it on your LinkedIn, then you can use it as a, I have a great story to tell you about this little badge. It's a compassion badge. And it's done through Credly, and Credly said, wow, what are you doing? You're teaching people about compassion? We said, yeah, and we want it to be free and accessible. They said, okay, we'll get on board. And so now you get a badge with the course. <clears throat> so again, community collaborations, compassionate community collaboration. So we're really excited about that. And I have to tell you, we had a student who was so excited because they got the compassion badge and they went to an interview and they said that they were a skilled expert in compassion. <laughs> <with their badge. laughs> so really great to have a student take the course, to have community members, all of us, right? All of us are in it and better together. Um, we also have a place for partnerships. If you think this is what I want to do, was it Phyllis that just came up? Who was it that talked to us just a minute ago? She said, I'm a member of AME and I would love for you all to come and work with our congregations. If you are, you know, in a particular congregation, if you're with a particular organization, we'd love to partner with you. And it means different things. So we encourage you to sign up. And then we want to hear your stories, your stories about compassion, the ones you told today, the ones once you watch the video or engage with people. I will tell you, I have put a compassionate challenge out to my family. And we were supposed to do this about, uh, and I don't know, when did we launch? In June. We said we were the following week, July 4th weekend, we were going to start this together. Our new date is September 3rd. But as a family, there is 11 of us. As a family, we're going to go through each of the six videos together. We have a lot of beautiful gifts in our family, and we have a lot of trauma in our family and a lot of healing to do. So the adults are going to take the course together. So everybody's gonna watch the videos together and then the adults will engage in the course with each other. So there'll be six of us taking the course together. So I encourage you, I challenge, compassionately challenge you to think about with whom can you practice compassion? What collaboration, what connections do you want to form to go through this? Um, okay, so the one I want to invite us to watch is going to be Be Compassionate. How are we compassionate with others? And since we're sitting here in community together, we thought that would be the one we could watch. Yeah. <laughs> world-renowned meditation teacher Sharon Salzberg shared a story about an experience she had one day which many of us can relate to. While driving with a friend, Salzberg became agitated when they were stuck in traffic. She received a profound insight when her friend turned to her and said, you know, we're the traffic too. That story illustrates our connection to others and our ability to recognize that just like me, others experience difficulty, distress, and suffering. The word compassion literally means to suffer together. When we recognize the suffering of others and feel the wish to relieve that suffering, we are experiencing one of the superpowers of our humanity. Our capacity to act with compassion is deeply rooted in our biology. When humans witness the suffering of another, it alerts our brains to react. It releases a chemical reaction that compels us to feel concerned, love, and a desire to help. 
Without this instinct to care for others, our chances of survival would have been seriously limited. For example, anthropologists have discovered evidence of early humans with serious injuries or disabilities who could only have survived into old age with the help of their group. Today, our ability to act with compassion compels us to react to our baby's cry when she's hungry, reach out to a friend going through a difficult time, or let another driver merge ahead of us when we are in traffic. When we practice compassion, we truly understand that just like me, most people want to be happy, healthy, and out of harm's way. Compassion is a powerful state that can help us connect with others and improve the world. In this video, we'll talk with Father David Garcia to explore the nature of compassion, and we'll reflect on the way compassion in action has a rippling effect. A few years ago, Pope Francis started what ended up being a full year of mercy in the Catholic Church. And it was just focus on mercy. How do you put mercy into action? And to me, that's very, very close to the whole idea of compassion, because compassion is actually being able to put mercy and, and, and how we feel towards others into, into action. So the concept of compassion I see in the lives and the commitments of the people who are ordinary people, but they do extraordinary things in moments when they are most needed. All the stories that we had during the COVID period, so many of them were stories of compassion, of people who didn't have to do what they were doing, but they did it because they cared about others. I think some people would see compassion as weakness. Why should I show compassion to anybody if they just pulled themselves up by their bootstraps? But to understand that in our society, uh, there are a lot of people who have almost no options. Why are the poor poor? They're poor because they have no options. They live where they live because no one wants affordable housing in their neighborhood. And so then they end up being in these islands of poverty. And so here we have something that in a sense we have systematically created and not allowed ourselves to be compassionate by saying, we gotta break some of these systems up in order for all of us to be able not only to feel compassion, but compassion helps pull a person up. It doesn't leave them on the ground. The idea is that their humanity is at stake and I'm trying to pull that up so that they can live, that they can have options in life, they can choose to develop who they are and who God wants them to be. And I can have a role in that by, by, by a few things that I can do um, with an individual and also with my community. When I was a young priest, I was involved in community organizing. I was in one of the poorest neighborhoods of the city. And over the course of five years that I was there at that neighborhood, we were able to get a lot of physical things done in the neighborhood, like drainage and a new park and streets and sidewalks and, and worked on the school, difference in the world, things changed. So I've seen it happen. And uh, that's what gives me hope that it can happen at a larger level. Compassion is more than an emotional state. At its highest level, compassion is action. It makes us stronger, more resilient, and more connected to others. Studies show compassion improves individuals' health and lives, fuels positive change in societies, and supports the most vulnerable. It is also a sign of strength rather than weakness. In the words of Cahil Gibran, tenderness and kindness are not signs of weakness and despair, but manifestations of strength and resolution. When we practice compassion, we are not just kind to others, we are also being kind to ourselves, which helps us feel stronger, more peaceful, and happier. We hope you enjoyed this video. For more resources and to continue learning, please visit the link on the screen and join the Compassionate USA Skills course. Okay, so you know where the website is and then you can go back and screen. Yeah, she was trying to take a, the, the picture of the quote and I was like, it's in your phone, it's, it's, it's on the website. Yeah, so we're gonna invite you into conversation again around a question that is from our discussion guide available. So we're trying to continue, we're, we're continuously iterating so that we have resources that people can use. So this is from um, the discussion guide, but I'd like to invite you back into your pairs 
thinking about the question, what is needed to be compassionate and connected, the title of this workshop, what is needed to be compassionate and connected in daily support of each other, in complex times, and through the next traumatic event? So let me read that again. I'm also a visual person. What is needed to be compassionate and connected in daily support of each other in these complex times and through the next traumatic event? So I'll give you a moment to think about it. And then if you'll, again, pair share back into dialogue with the question. Yeah, about five minutes this time. Do, 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 Before she leaves, we were going to say thank you for joining us this morning, Councilwoman Dr. Adriana Rocha Garcia, District 4. Our city council coming to find out what we're doing and being part of it. So thank you for being with us. She's going to go and walk around and find other things too. So um, we're, we're coming in for the end run here. Um, I hope that you discovered some things. I want to invite you in these last moments, what you just talked about, everything you've heard, mull on one action step that you each can do in this direction after you leave this room. What can you do? Like with social media, I can go home, that's not me, but I could go home and post something on social media if, if I knew how, but it's not me, don't laugh, Ronnie. Anyway, um, if you can, let's look at this again. I want to point out some other things that are there so you're aware. Go to the resources at the top bar. There you go. So on your phone, on your own computer, there's also a listing of resources. The people who are in, like um, Dr. Ga David Garcia, there's information about every one of those. And just think about one of the very first partners with Compassionate USA, hold on to your seats was an entire continent, an entire country. Compassionate Australia was one of the very first partners. So people in Australia are listening to Father David Garcia. What? That blows my mind. Anyway, so there are other resources. We didn't overload resources. We tried to give like like what we think are the very best to like move things forward, right? So I mentioned to you uh, the book that Karen Armstrong wrote after she um, got the TED Prize, 12 Steps to a Compassionate Life. It's like in oh, 45 different languages, 45 different languages, because it's under demand. Um, there's also a great partner on civil discourse and conversation. Uh, community collaboration that I mentioned, community healing, where you can get good stuff there. This is also local. The community healing, healingsatx.org, collects things that actually happen in San Antonio in ways that you can gather together uh, like a porch fest and be about healing. So it collects different ideas of real things that are happening that you can replicate in your neighborhood to bring about togetherness and healing, being better together. Yes, Jules? What did you call that? It's, it's listed here. Uh, Healthy San Antonio, S-A-T-X. Um, there's also a link on collective trauma. And there are also then links to um, more specialized compassion uh, training, education, based on, scroll back up, based on age, adult, high stress jobs, lifelong. This one's a really good one that says lifelong. That's with the Charter for Compassion itself. It's like continuing education. And they try, they try not to offer anything. They try to offer everything free. But if they charge anything, it's under $35. So people around the world are, have continuing education when it comes to compassion. And so uh, pre-K, K through 12, professional, um, Anyway, and there are other really valuable resources, but again, it's like one page. It's not like 
overwhelming, but you know, like I would like another course on, you know, compassionate companioning, which one is happening right now, by the way. But um, so things like that. There's this resource page. Um, Sonia, can you go to stories at the top bar? We're looking for how things are, how this material is being used. So um, we've had people out of New York State who have written me in an interfaith organization and they're like, well, can we use this? You know, the videos in a study group? And I go, yeah, and you don't need permission. It's online, you, you can use it. But we wanna hear some of those stories. How are people using it? What is it doing? So there's a space where you can go and we're gonna be collecting stories and you'll be hearing stories from all over the world, right? Uh, then go to partners up at the bar. Again, all of this is on your phone. Um, so partners, keep scrolling down. Yeah, it looks, and I love to scroll over them because they do this really cool thing. They, they change colors. <laughs> Dig it. And um, so all of these folks, and it continues to grow, are partners. And their partnership is like, yes. That's their first part. Yes, our world needs more compassion. Two, they're going to tell other people about it. And three, they're going to use it. They're going to implement it. That's a partnership. Say yes, tell others, and use it. Right? But what we're doing, back to connections, spider webbing, if you click on any one of those, let's click on, um, I don't know, NAMI. NAMI. That's a good one, NAMI. Look, see it turn blue. Isn't that cool? But if you click on the logo of any of the partners, it'll take you directly to their website so you can find out and web connect with them. So we're creating a global webbing of people, entire cities, organizations, the Spurs. And I don't know about you, and this was written into the original resolution, but you know how the Spurs have always been a little different than other teams? I would suggest to you it's because they're compassionate. Their coach respects them. Respect is a, a step of compassionate compassion. Respects himself, you know, and they, I think that's their thing. They're compassionate. And we heard that too as well with Uvalde, right? Yeah. So I don't know where that went. Oh, somebody else, another partner. You're just scrolling around, aren't you? She's scrolling around. So some of these are local and global. And so the partners that are beyond San Antonio, they are also forming local partnerships. And so we're trying to model for them. And we've got restaurants as local partners who are saying yes as well as businesses, and um, there, this is uh, Florida, I think. But it's also fun to see how compassion is growing in other cities and what it looks like. So, uh, what time is it? It's 11.45. So, bless you for being here. If you have, oh, we're gonna hand this out. They're handing them out in the back. I told you we were gonna give you the cliff notes to Karen Armstrong's 12 steps. And don't forget the evaluation. You're going to get a gift of 12 steps in short form and survey. Thank you all for being here.